Hi guys, I want to talk about the concept of bandwidth. Now, this is not something that I would typically talk about on my channel, but I wanted to do a video on this to hopefully clear up some of the misconceptions about the way that bandwidth works. And I've been getting questions from some of my non-technical friends about some of the advertisement that goes around, that comes in mailers and emails and things like that about faster internet connections. And they'll have something like blazing fast internet gives some large number. What I want to do with this video is talk about why a larger number doesn't mean faster internet. And there are some cases where that might be true, but for most cases, it's probably not even gonna matter. So I'm gonna talk about how bandwidth works using an analogy, and then I'm gonna provide you with a tool to help you estimate how much bandwidth you actually need. And that will allow you to select an appropriate internet connection that's gonna be in line with what you actually use when you're connecting to the internet. So to explain how this works, uh, I'm gonna use a highway as an analogy. So a highway is a good analogy because it kind of has all the elements of how bandwidth works. So I chose a highway having two lanes and one that has five lanes. And each one of these highways has a 70 mile an hour speed limit. Now I know on a highway, you're gonna have variable speeds. You're gonna have people that are probably going a little faster than the speed limit. You're going to people going less than the speed limit. For this analogy, I'm going to assume that everybody's doing exactly the speed limit because on a wire or fiber optic cable, all of the data is flowing down that particular media at a constant speed. And it's probably going to be some sub efficient or significant portion of the speed of light. Now, something moving in a media like that isn't the speed of light, but it's pretty dang fast. And we'll just kind of leave it like that. So you're not going to end up with one packet moving faster than the other one down the same media. It's all going to move at the exact same rate. And that's why I chose this analogy with a set speed limit. So bandwidth is actually more closely related to the number of lanes on a highway than it is to the speed limit. As we already established, you really can't increase the rate in which something flows down a wire or flows over a fiber optic cable. So the only way that you can increase the amount of traffic it handles is by adding width to that. In the case of media, that's what we call bandwidth. And on the case of a highway, it's more lanes, but we're still going to have the same speed limit regardless if I have two lanes or five lanes. So let's talk about the traffic now on these highways. Suppose I have one car moving down the two lane and I have one car moving down the five lane at 70 miles an hour. They're going to both go from point A to point B in roughly the same amount of time. If I add three more to the two lane and three more to the five lane, nothing has really changed. Cars are still moving at 70 miles an hour. They're going to get from point A to point B in the same amount of time. If I add 10 more cars to the two lane and 10 more cars to the five lane, everything is still moving at 70 miles an hour. Things are going to go from point A to point B in roughly the same amount of time. Now, the difference between these two highways, though, is the two lane is now saturated. I can't put any more cars on that highway without causing some kind of congestion. While I could add a lot more cars to the five lane before I run into the same problem. In fact, I could add a total of 21 more cars to the five lane before I have a problem with congestion. So let's talk about this in terms of internet traffic. Now, let's say I wanted to do email. Now, email is a fairly common thing. You open up your email app, it connects to a server, it downloads a message, and it might go into a wait state or disconnect depending on what email protocol you're using. But at the start of the program, it basically just has a burst of activity, then it shuts down and it's done. And we could represent that by two cars across a couple of lanes, because typically with internet traffic, it tends to fan out across the available bandwidth that it has. So whether I do this on a two lane highway, proverbially speaking, or a five lane hi uh, highway, it doesn't really change anything about that particular use case. So let's talk about something like a 4K stream. Now, a 4K stream is still pretty bandwidth and intense, but it's going to basically ask for that dedicated bandwidth over a long period of time. So it's basically like asking for an entire lane of traffic for the duration of whatever that 4K stream is, say two hours for a movie or something like that. So I could do that on the two lane, or I could do it on the five lane easily and both would handle that 4K stream. But in the case of this 2K stream, if I wanted to do email, 
I can't really fan out like I did in the first case. I'm going to have to just use a single lane to fetch my email. And it might take a little bit longer to get my email, but it's not going to be such that I really care uh, or it's going to make a big impact on my productivity. Instead of taking two seconds, it takes four seconds or something like that. Now, if I was to open up a second 4K stream on this two lane highway, now I have saturated the available bandwidth with two 4K streams. And if I try to do email in any case, it's going to interrupt one stream or both streams to do that email. And it might go into a buffering state to handle that. However, if I was to open up another 4K stream down here on this five lane, I still have the capacity to do that. And I still have capacity to do email. I guess I have the capacity to maybe do some internet browsing or internet shopping. Maybe I want to do some gaming or whatever it might be. I still have the available a bandwidth to handle more load, even though I have two 4K streams that are consuming two full lanes of traffic. So whenever we think about bandwidth, think of about think about bandwidth in terms of lanes of traffic. A 20 megabit connection in simplistic terms might be a 20 lane highway and a 300 megabit connection might be a 300 lane highway and a one gigabit connection might be a 1000 lane highway. Each one of them has a speed limit of 70 miles an hour, but the amount of traffic they can handle is significantly different because they have more capacity available at 70 miles an hour. If you want to see how much bandwidth you have available, you can go to uh, Google and just type in speed test and then run this little test right here. I have about 300 megabits per second at my home. And, and depending on the time of day, it depends on how much of that is going to be available. Sometimes I get over like I just did at 320 megabits. And sometimes it's less than that. Usually it's between uh, 250 and 330, depending on the time of day. And upload I have about around uh, 11.5 according to this test, but I'm supposed to get around 10. So I'm getting a little bit more than I actually have available to me according to the advertisement. So this is looking at both the download and the upload. The, the case that we looked at in our analogy was the download speed, which is going to be the main one that most people are going to be interested in in whenever they're talking about using the internet at home or are they going to be using it at an office or something like that. If I was running a data center, then both of these become pretty important numbers because a data center uh, is going to need to send a lot of data. So upload becomes a very important number in that case. But for most offices and residences, it's not as important as the download speed because you're more consuming than you are creating. However, upload can be a problem if you are creating a lot of content and you're doing a lot of those kinds of uh, workloads. In my case, it's usually not a big deal, but there are times I wish I had a little bit more upload speed, but I am perfectly happy with my 300 megabits down, which is perfect for what I do. So going back to our analogy, I could think of this as 328 lanes of traffic coming into my residence and 11 lanes going out. Now, as I said, the majority of people are concerned about consuming the Internet. So this is going to be more important in that case. If I was running a data center, this would be terrible. But for uh, a home office, it's usually OK. There are cases sometimes where it's eh, a little bit uh, hard to deal with, but for the most part, it's probably OK for me. So if we can think about it in those terms, I can think about estimating my need based on the kinds of workloads that I'm going to be doing in a given amount of time. So I wrote a little app and I'll make it available to you so that you can kind of do the same thing. I'm going to show you that app now, how you can estimate your bandwidth requirements. And then based on the amount of data you have coming into your house, you can see, is that enough or do I need to get more or am I, am I overpaying or something like that? So here's the app. It's available at blaze.net slash bandwidth.html and it's internet use case bandwidth calculator. It's the name of the app. And I whipped this up in uh, about 15 minutes. It didn't take me long at all to write this. Uh, I originally did it as a spreadsheet, but I thought it'd be more accessible as a web page. So the way it works is you have use cases here on the left from least bandwidth intense to most bandwidth intense, like email being very low bandwidth to video streaming being very high bandwidth. Now, these are just some average numbers based on some research that I did, but uh, these are not going to be indicative of every case in every instance, but these are some good averages. So if, uh, if your 
actual usage varies from what I'm estimating here. It's uh, because I'm basing this on averages, not based on your particular instance, but this is just to try to give you an estimate. So based on that, you have use cases and across the top, you have different periods during the day. Um, and what you all want to do is think about the time of day when you probably are using the most bandwidth. That's not going to be 2 a.m. in the morning for me. I might have a couple of smart home devices, but beyond that, I'm asleep. There's nobody watching anything. There's nobody streaming, nobody gaming, nothing like that. So I'm not going to fill that call out. The only one that I'm really going to be concerned about are those times of day where we're probably actually using some pretty substantial internet traffic, which could be one of two times a day for my particular uh, life. And that's either when my kiddos get home from school or at night whenever uh, my kiddos have gone to bed and I'm just might be relaxing, my wife might be relaxing or something like that. So I'm going to fill it out for the 3 p.m. hour and then I'll fill it out for the 9 p.m. hour and just kind of get an estimate for each one of those. Um, for the 3 p.m. hour, um, after my kids get home from school, my wife might be doing some email. I'm definitely doing email for work stuff. Um, those 4K, those uh, smart home devices are doing their thing. Um, media, music streaming. I, I'm, I tend to stream music during the day when I'm working. No, no online gaming going at the time. Now, maybe some social media for my wife. I probably have a thousand tabs open for work stuff, for web browsing, probably some online shopping. My wife might be buying groceries or doing some Amazon shopping or something like that. Um, my kiddos are definitely doing some streaming at that time of day for uh, watching stuff on Disney Plus or something like that. I'm probably on a conference call doing remote work. And I might be doing some content work during that time of day as well, but no 4K stream. So the way this app works is it's going to highlight the time of day where you have the most bandwidth need. It's not trying to sum up every day, every hour for the entire day. It's trying to highlight the peak and that's where you have to plan your capacity around. So in this case, the peak so far is 76 megabits per second during the three o'clock hour. So if I wanted to estimate it for the nine o'clock hour, uh, I'm just gonna go through the same exercise. Again, might be doing some email between myself and my wife. I still have those smart home devices. Those never really stop working. I might be streaming music. I might be gaming. Um, probably a couple of social media sites open. Might be doing some web browsing between the two of us. Maybe one of us is web uh, online shopping. Um, I might be streaming something uh, like YouTube content. Probably no video conferencing for remote work or telemedicine. I might be doing some content dev. And my wife might wa be watching a 4K stream. So in that case, we need 86 megabits per second for that hour of the day, even though it's only two people online versus four people online to cover these use cases. But regardless, this is just highlighting that I need at least 86 megabits per second in my internet connection to handle my peak capacity. And so that's how you kind of have to shop for your internet usage. So during most of the day, I'm probably using less than 10 uh, for just the, kind of the baseline traffic. But during these spikes, I need at least 86 to cover my bases. As we saw, I have 300 available at my home. Now, that is actually the base package in my area. I can't get a lower package than what I have available to me right now at 300 megabits. I could pay for up to a gigabit, but I would be wasting money because there's no time of day that I actually need that kind of bandwidth. So if your need is for 86 and you're paying for 500, when there is a 100 megabit uh, package available, you might be paying for bandwidth that you're never actually using. So use this as an estimator to figure out what your kind of baseline requirement is and plan accordingly. Now, it might be the case that I grow and I need more capacity, but I still have a lot of overhead. I still have over 200 megabits of capacity available to me, so I'm probably not going to need a faster internet connection for a while, if at all, in the foreseeable future. So again, just figure out what your needs are and use this kind of as a way to benchmark what your capacity is against your current internet connection and see if you need more bandwidth or you could get away with less bandwidth. So hopefully this has cleared up some of the misconceptions about what bandwidth is. And like I said, the analogy here is to think of bandwidth as the number of lanes on a highway than it is the actual speed limit on the highway. Because all the traffic on the proverbial highway is moving at the same speed, the, really the only way you can add capacity then is by adding more lanes to that highway. 
So in this case, what I gave you was a tool to estimate the number of proverbial lanes that you need uh, for your particular internet usage. In mine, we saw I needed about 86 megabits per second, but I have 300 megabits per second of capacity available to my home office. Yours might vary. And so if your estimate is over what is available at your home office, then maybe you need to purchase more internet. Uh, if you're coming uh, way under what you're actually paying for and there's a cheaper package, maybe you can save a buck by buying that cheaper package, depending on what's available in your area and your needs as an internet user. So use this information with that kind of discretion. As always, thanks for watching the video, like and subscribe. And if you have comments or questions, drop those in the comments section down below. Share this with your friends, share the app with your friends. And like I said, it'll be linked in the video description down below. And hopefully I'll be producing more content in the vein of network and networking concepts in future video. I've still got a few in AI that I want to do, and I'll be posting those in the coming weeks. And as I said, as always, thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.